When I make my usual videos, I generally show the subject matter of those videos in a virtual machine, mainly because it would be more difficult to show inside my running system, especially if I had to log out or reboot, you know, for something to take effect. A VM makes this much more seamless as I can perform these tasks without ever stopping the recording. So today I wanted to show how I use virtual machines to keep multiple base configurations of whatever operating system I'm running and how I just keep those up to date. And honestly, this is a fantastic use case for you Arch guys out there because you can install Arch once and then clone that base install and install whatever you want after that without having to go through the whole install process every time. It, honestly, I, if I were an Arch guy, I would definitely have like two base, like two base configurations of Arch in VMs at all times, just so I can test things out on a virtual machine before I put it on my system. Because why not? But at any rate, with the release of Debian Bullseye just around the corner, I wanted to make a video for the impatient among us as well to show. How to go ahead and install Bullseye. Now, this is going to be the release candidate, but it will become the new version of Debian Stable through your regular updates. So I'm going to leave a link in the description down below if you wanted to download this ISO and try it out for yourself. So when I install Bullseye today, I'm, I'm going to do three different virtual machines, but I'm not going to run through three different installers. So the first thing I'm going to do is install just the base system. So just Debian Bullseye with a TTY. Then I'm going to clone that machine and I'm going to install Xorg. And then I'm going to clone that machine. And then I'm going to run task cell and install the XF and install XFCE. And when I get done, I'm going to have three separate virtual machines and only have to run the installer once. So really this video is simply me setting up Debian Bulls IVMs for upcoming content. I just decided to take you guys along for the ride. And kind of a quick behind the scenes look at how I set up virtual machines for tutorial like videos. So I guess with all that said, let's set up a VM. So on the desktop here, I have Vert Manager installed. And if you'd like to see how I got Vert Manager and everything running in Debian, uh, I'll leave a link to the cards up here somewhere. So in the machine, what I'm going to do, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to start a new machine. And we're going to install from local media. Just hit forward and we're going to browse for media. I'm going to go into my ISO directory that I've already set up. And I'm going to come down here to Debian Bullseye RC1 Net Installer. Choose that volume. And we're going to give it the description for Debian testing. We can hit forward here. Now I'm going to give it four gigs of RAM. And I'm going to give it four CPU cores. We're going to hit forward. And it's going to want to give us 20 gigs out of, you know, just by default. What I want to do, I want to actually customize this a little bit because I want it to be in a certain directory and have be a certain size. So I'm going to select or create custom storage. Hit manage. I'm going to go to my VM directory that I've already set up. Refresh this. And I'm going to name it not Debian testing. It's going to be Debian dash bullseye dash no dash de for no desktop environment. Now the max capacity, we're going to make this say 32. 32 gigabytes is going to be Lord's plenty. So we hit finish there, choose volume. Let's hit forward. Now we're going to change this name again because it still wants to name it Debian testing. Debian dash bullseye dash no dash de. And I'm not going to customize anything. So we're just going to hit finish and it's going to start up. All right, so here we are at the installer and I'm just going to go through the graphical install. Now this is going to be 
just super duper simple it's going to be the same exact thing as the debian buster install it's just updated with new with a new theme maybe some new features i haven't gone through all the advanced options or anything so here we go graphical install and we're going to install english because i don't want to install it in esperanto today we're going to do united states American English because I'm lame and only know, and only know one language. All right, and the host name I'm going to leave it as Debian. Uh, no domain name. Now the root user I'm not going to set up a root user because right here, if you say, if you leave this empty, the root account will be disabled and the system's initial user account will be given will be given power to become root by using the sudo command. So I'm not going to fill out this at all. Just hit continue. So the new root user is going to be Mike. I'm going to give Mike a password. Just a simple little short password that is not Doctor Who themed. I promise it's not Doctor Who themed. Okay. Now we're going to give it the central time zone because I'm in Alabama. Going to start the partitioner. Now we've only got a 32 gig partition here. So what I want to do, I want to use guided and use the entire disk. And since we're installing on such a small disk, I'm going to do all files on one partition. That's recommended for new users. But if I have a larger disk, I'm going to set up a separate home partition. That way, in case something stupid happens and I got to reinstall or I got or if I'm doing snapshots or something, I'll have a separate partition for all my important stuff that's not on the system because the system's replaceable. Your files aren't. But with this just being VMs, I'm not I'm not terribly worried about it. So all files on. So there's that. Uh, we're going to finish partitioning and write changes to the disk. Give it until yes, and it's going to install the base system. So it's pretty painless so far. Installing Debian is a breeze. Now, once you figure out that you, you know, once you figure out all the packages you need, if they're not in the, you know, standard repositories, getting everything set up with the non-free repos, that's pretty easy too, but not necessarily easy for the uninitiated. All right, and I do not need to scan any additional media, so we're good there. Configure the package manager. United States is good. Dev.debian.org is good. Uh, no proxy, and we're going to let that continue to run. Now, also, if you wanted to install this with ButterFS subvolumes and stuff, I've got I've also got a video covering that, and I'll leave a link up to that, to that as well. And here you have a question that's opt-in, so that's that's great. Uh, if you want to participate in the package survey, I generally do participate in the package survey if I'm installing on hardware. But with it just being a VM, I don't usually participate. So I'm just going to continue. Now this is pretty much the menu you're going to get if you're going to run task sale later. But right now I'm not going to install anything. Oh, anything on this except you know what I, I think I will install the SSH server so we're gonna continue and now it asks if I'd like to install the grub bootload on, on the primary drive yes I do dev VDA that's exactly what we want all right the installation is complete we're going to reboot now. I'm going to let that run. And then the text becomes really small and you can barely see it. So I have been racking my brain trying to figure out how to enlarge this test because this is actually scaled inside Vert Manager. So what I want to do is actually follow a guide from Chris Titus. So let me log in. Let's clear the screen and we're going to do sudo dpkg 
reconfigure console setup. We're going to give it UTF-8, that's right, Latin 1 and Latin 5, that's fine. We're going to give it the terminus font, and we're going to make it, let's say, 16 by 32. That's the largest font. We'll clear the screen, and that is much, much better. And since I'm going to be cloning this, this it's going to carry this font or this setting to the next machine and the next machine. So, fantastic. So, pretty much what I want to do now, I want to uh, look at my Etsy app sources, my Etsy app sources.list file, and I want to install some packages that I know I want installed on everything across the board. So what I want to do, let's do sudo apt install git and vim. Give it the YY flag. We'll close the screen and then sudo vim slash etsy apt sources.list. And you see here, if you're looking at the sources.list here, you'll see that you have deb http colon slash slash deb.debian.org slash debian then space bullseye main. So this is gonna be only the free repositories for bullseye. And honestly, I kinda of like that. So I'm thinking about just leaving this. So if I want to install something later from the non-free repositories or from the contrib repositories, I can just go in, edit this file, run updates, and then install it. Not a big deal. So, but as it sits right now, if you're just going to run up if you're going to install this and just run updates this as this file sits right now this will become debian stable through no editing on your part so if you'd like to keep this the way it is it will eventually become debian stable which i think that's really cool so colon wq to write let's clear the screen and now I can pretty much turn this machine off and then go back and clone it and then boot up and I'll be exactly where I was on a separate machine. So give me just a second. So let's highlight this, Debian Bullseye, no DE. Let's force off, yes. Now that's gonna be open, so let's close that and Let's clone it, and let's call it Debian Bullseye. Ah. Xorg. Let's clone that. And now you see we have another one here. So let's run it. Open. All right, so now that we have this other machine cloned, we have all of the settings and every package that we had installed on Debian Bullseye No DE in this machine now. So let's say I wanted to install Xorg. So sudo apt install Xorg and then xserver dash Xorg. All right, and that's pretty much everything I want to have installed on this on this particular machine. So if I go to virtual machine and shut down and force off, it's not going to capture that window because I'm in this one. I'm capturing just this window. But I, but as you can see, the guess is not running. So if I get out of that and let's say I want to go up to no DE and I want to clone this machine. Now let's call this one Debian Bullseye XFCE. Let's clone that. Then let's run this one and open. Now with this one, I just have to log in. 
let's clear the screen and let's do sudo apt install task cell so sudo task cell and you see we pretty much have the same exact setup that we had in the GUI installer except now it's running in an incurses environment so let's install XFCE we're going to hit OK and then it's going to install the XFCE meta package easy peasy right But of course, if you wanted to go back through the installer and change some things and say you wanted to make this one a little bit larger or if you wanted to make the other one a little smaller, you, you can definitely do that. But for me, 32 gigs, that's Lord's plenty. All right, and that finished. So... Let's just reboot. And you see it popped up the graphical part. And we have the graphical installer, so, or the graphical login manager. All right. And let's edit the, let's set the display options here. Now this is probably gonna look a little small, even though it is 1080p. This one is, at, my screen is, is a 2560 by 1440, but this is 1080p. And if you're watching this on a larger screen, it's gonna look fine, but on a smaller screen, it's gonna be pretty small. So that's about all I wanted to show today was I wanted to go through the Debian Bullseye installer and install, of course, Debian Bullseye with no desktop environment at all for stuff that I wanted to have set up in virtual machines that didn't require a, a graphic user interface. Then I also wanted to set up one with Xorg already installed. That way I wouldn't have to worry about installing that. I can just set up something with a window manager or whatever make things easy on myself anyway and then i wanted to have one with uh, xfce installed because if i'm going to run a full desktop environment xfce is actually my environment of choice so xfce is fantastic i really really enjoy it i'm not a gnome guy <laughs> but the xfc environment is fantastic um which in my opinion it goes like this it's xfce mate cinnamon kde or maybe kde then cinnamon whatever but for me the top two xfc and mate but anyway so i just wanted to kind of show that today and yeah it's the installer works flawlessly. I've had zero issues with it. I've gone through this installer many times. I haven't had any issues whatsoever. So I guess with all that said, thank you for watching. Y'all have a nice day. Like, share, and subscribe.